Working with dates and date pickers in Excel can be tricky. There's code to write, formats to set up, and regional settings to consider. But today, all of that goes away. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today we're gonna to create the ultimate date picker added. This brand new date picker is gonna work in any workbook at any point in time, and it's gonna have multi-day support, multi-language support. You're gonna be able to enable and disable, and it's gonna work from minute one when you open a brand new workbook. It's gonna be an incredible training you won't wanna miss. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to solve problems. Date pickers inherently have a lot of problems and issues. We're gonna solve all of them to create this incredible, dynamic, fully customizable date picker, multi-language, multi-settings. So it is going to be awesome. I'm super excited to bring this to you. The beauty of something like this is you're gonna be able to open a brand new workbook with no code at all. All you need to do is format a cell as a date, select on that cell, that date picker is going to show up. It is as easy as that to use this date picker. So I've got a lot to share with you today. If you are new to this Excel for Freelancers channel, don't forget to get subscribed. That's the button there that'll help you get alerts each and every week. Don't forget to click on that notification icon bell each and every Tuesday, I create these comprehensive trainings. And each and every Saturday, I create basic VBA trainings to let you know the world of Excel and VBA. It is my goal, not just to teach you Excel, but to make you successful with Excel, to put those skills into practice, to earn a lot of money. Today is no different where we create this very cool, customizable date picker, where we can set a start date for any date and we can also set a language to any language here. So I've got a lot to share with you in this training, and I'm gonna go step by step to show you how you can create this all by yourself. And even if you don't want to create it by yourself, the skills that you will learn in this training will help you for anything, and we're gonna be creating. Now, if this looks a little bit familiar, you did follow my last training, which was a basic VBA where we created a very basic add-in, and I gave something similar as a bonus, a date picker. I got a lot of great feedback on that, in fact, there was some issues with regional settings that we're going to solve, and there's a lot of problems with the original date picker, and we're gonna solve all those. So let's start with the traditional date picker and understand what kind of problems. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna disable this date picker, and that means it's not going to work. That's the beauty of it. Now we select, nothing's gonna happen. So what I want you to understand is how we've ultimately had problems with date pickers in the past. And so what we do is we have these traditional issues and problems and the solutions that we're gonna be creating with this brand new date picker. So in the past, when we wanted to insert a date picker, we'd do something like this. So we'd go to a workbook or usually a BAS file or something in which where we have the date picker. So I'm gonna just open this, an older version with something I taught. And I've got a what's called a form pop-up calendar or date picker. And first of all, it appeared actually, but appeared off the screen. That's one issue. So I have to drag it over here. So the location of it, and of course it looks really boring, and you see it's got a lot of issues. So this is it. So now let's say I want to use this in a brand new workbook. What do I need to do? Well, what I need to do is I need to go into VBA. So we're going to go into the developer, Visual Basic. We also can use Alt F11. That's a shortcut. And I've got this workbook. So I've got a few workbooks open now. So I've got uh, AI Toolpack. If you haven't seen this AI Toolpack, this is a fantastic application where you have your own AI assistant. You can fix formulas fix your code, you can get table data, any data you want, write code, and a chat GPT function, so make sure you get the AI tool pack. So back into the VBA. So what we have here is our three Excel add-ins. So let's take a quick look at that. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna open up a new workbook here. And so we're gonna click on new. And I've got this new workbook. And now remember, our date picker is disabled, the added. We don't want it to working right now. So what I'm going to do here is I've gotta go into the code and I've gotta take from my three Excel calendars, I've got that calendar form here. So here's the date picker, this calendar. And I also got my book three, which is my new workbook. So I'm gonna drag this into here. And now we've got our calendar form, so it's inside our new workbook. And now let's say we go into sheet one and we want this to appear somewhere. So let's say on F2, when I click F2, I want it to appear. So we'd have to write something like this. We'd go into the code and we'd write worksheet and we wanna write a selection change event. So that means when we select a cell, we want something to happen. Then we write if, 
not intersect. And then what do we want? The target, which is the cell that we're going to go. And we need to write down what cell, what specific cell. So let's say F2 is the one we want to write. So we'd write range F2. Now somebody who doesn't know code or doesn't want to write code would have to do all this is nothing. Then when the user makes the selection, then I want to show that calendar. So I'd write in calendar and then we would write form dot and then show. So we want to show that calendar form. Now, if you want more than one cells, you need to write each one of those cells in here, such as comma F4 and so on and so forth. So now when user selects that here, we see that the calendar actually it appeared, but you can't see it. It's way over on my other screen, right? I want it right here. So we'd have to select it and then to put in the date. Now the regional format, the days, and when I select it again, again, it's way off to the side and you'd have to drag it over here. So we don't know where it's going to appear. So the first issue that we want to address is the fact that code must be written every worksheet and every workbook in which we want this date picker to appear. So that's the first big hurdle. Somebody has to understand a little bit of VBA or at least to be able to copy and paste. And if you want to distribute these workbooks, we don't really want them to have to do that if they want to make changes to where the date picker appears. So that's the first one. And the solution is creating an add-in with a class module and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that it allows you to do that wherever so if we enable this create a new workbook as I showed you it appears automatically so we've solved that problem also we saw the problem that the date in fact it was completely off the screen the date picker does not display adjacent to a cell so that's going to be a real problem if I enable this here and I click on a brand new sheet here and I select on a date we see that the date picker appears directly below the cell and if I select on here again directly below the cell and if I select on another cell and it's not showing up again, all I need to do is format it as a date here. And I select on that same cell again. Again, it's going to appear directly below the cell. And that's exactly where we want it. So our date picker code has been written to place the user form, the date picker directly under the cell. So we've solved that problem. And the visible date is not present on the calendar. That's another one. So what do I mean by that? In our traditional, you probably didn't see it, but in our traditional calendar, if I select a cell, I want whatever date that appears. Let's say I want that date. Notice it says May of 2024. But if I change that to, a, let's say, a different year and a different month, I want that month and I want that year to show up January 2022. So I want it to show up. And if I format a date, in fact, I've actually, you can't, it's kind of hard to see, but actually the sixth is italicized and selected there. So it's actually changed. Okay, so we solved that issue. And so let's format this in a date and there is no date in there. I want the current month and the current year today. As of the time of recording, it is May 8, 2024. So notice that May 8, 2024 is italic. I should make that a little more clear. So the current date is going to be the default if there is no date in there. So that really helps us because sometimes you just want to change this and you want it to default to whatever the date and the month is shown up in there. So that can be very helpful. So we've solved that problem where the visible date is not present on the calendar. And this one defaults to either the selected date or the current date if there's nothing in the cell. Also, calendars have an old look and feel. You've seen that before where there's such an old look and feel in that gray. This one gives us full flexibility. We can customize this however we want. We can change the background color to anything we want with this color picker. So if you want a specific theme on a specific workbook, you can do just that and then change the look and feel however you want. So it's kind of extremely flexible. In fact, I've never seen a date picker that's this flexible with look and feel. And it's very easy to just simply select the button. We can change the off month. I'm calling it the off month because it's the month before and after, and I'm calling it the active month. And then the font color we can change. So you can completely change the look and the feel. And we've got this nice little toggle setting here that we've created. So again, bringing it into the 20th century, we have this date picker. So it's much more user customized interface. And this means that even if they have no coding experience at all, can change the look and the feel by the end user. And also one of the biggest issues is the regional date issues. And all the other calendars have big problems when it comes to regional date. In fact, the original date picker that I showed last week did also have that. So some people said, hey, your date picker works for the US based, but what about four different formats? 
This particular date picker will work in any region, in any format, and it's always going to be based on whatever your current date format is. So whether it's month, day, whatever the date format is, notice it's just showing month, day, and then four letters for the year. So whatever your system date is, this is going to default to that. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. So we're solving the regional date format issues, which is a very big issue, and that gets solved. So it's going to match the user's machine date format. Also, I did get a little bit of help. So thank you very much for your help. Rudy, Rudy helped me a little bit, especially with the date formats. He confirmed to me that it was working and he gave me some great ideas. So thank you for your feedback and help on this, Rudy, to make this a really strong and powerful date picker. So we're solving the regional data issues. Closing the form, another idea Rudy came up with, which I appreciate that. Some people, if you don't want to select a date, just pressing the keyboard escape key will now close it. So I'm just using the escape key. I'm not clicking anything. So now we can close the form with the escape key. So thank you for that idea, Rudy. So we've got that covered. non multi language another issue is date pickers don't have a multi-language so notice that it's sunday monday tuesday i want a date picker that can be used for multiple languages this add-in gives us that flexibility so we can set to any language here spanish english or whatever you want just about it i don't have every single language but notice that the days here changed based on the language let's show that again so if i select another language like swedish here and then we go here we've got three digit days and if i get any of these three digits wrong it's fully customizable too and i'll show you how to do that in case you want to add language or change some things about it so that's very very nice so we have that ability in that also another thing is we also have non-customized start day so some people start on sunday some people start on monday or whatever you want to start it on so it's now fully customizable that start day so all i need to do is just change it right here and i select on the calendar and that start day is fully customizable. So we can change that to anything we want. Very, very helpful on that. Lastly, we have non-user intuitive. So again, this defaults to the month and year of the selected. So this is kind of a duplicate. I've already got that up here. Defaults to month and year of selected or current date. That's the same thing here, so we don't need that extra one. But uh, there's probably others that'll add to their other features that I realized. So that's the big difference for a date picker like that, because this works in any workbook on any worksheet. And we have the ability to turn it off and on. Maybe we don't want it on, so we have that. And that's kind of a nice feature. So that's exactly what we want to focus on. We can see the big differences based on this date picker to others. So I'm really happy to bring this to you. Of course, this add-in is absolutely free. Remember, this is an add-in file we'll be going into. It's not a traditional workbook. This thing called Training Workbook S, I'm not going to share this with you. There's nothing much here. I want to share this add-in with you. So the free template and add-in is actually an XLAM file. So what's the first thing we want to do when we have this? Well, the first thing we want to do is install it on our machine. So to do that, we're going to go into the Developers tab. And if we don't have it, what we want to do is simply customize the ribbon here, right click anywhere and make sure the developers checked off. Once it is checked off, we're going to go into the Excel add-ins. Now mine is already checked, but let's say it wasn't. So we see that we don't have the day picker. It's gone. We don't have it. And if we try to select on something here, nothing's going to happen because we don't have the date picker installed. So this is how easy it is. When you get your workbook, make sure we do two things. You want to actually right click on the file. Let me just show you something. It would look like this. So we would have a file here. We would right click it. Go to the properties, make sure after downloading, and you'll see something like an unblocking checkbox, something called unblock here, especially on a Windows PC. Make sure in this add-in file, you unblock it. That's very, very important before installed. That's a new security system. Once it is unblocked and you're sure that that checkbox has been checked, it's not here, but if I download, an Excel AM or an Excel SM, meaning it's got macros in it, you will have this. Anytime it's downloaded from the internet, you will have it. You can also set it as a safe location. So that gives you an idea of what you need to do first. The second step that you may want to do is you want to then add it. So I'm going to put Excel add-ins and you want to browse for it. Now look for whatever location you found it in. And you're going to look for something called date picker add-in Excel AM, wherever you've downloaded. And then you just click OK. I've already got this. So it's just going to ask me it already exists in the file location. You want to replace it? I'll say yes or no. Either one would be OK. And we're going to click OK. And then you're going to see it here. You'll select on it and you now see that it's available. You can disable and enable. When we select on it, we now see that we have the date picker available to us. 
let's go ahead and set it back to an add-in just so that we create automatically for our new sheet. So again, I'm gonna go into our add-in here. I am going to set the properties here and we're gonna look for its add-in. We're gonna change that to true. Now, when I open up a brand new workbook here, we do get to see our date picker and that's what I'm looking for, our date picker. So remember, it's only when there's an add-in. So the idea is this, there's some special conditions that I want. There's a few conditions. I only want this date picker to run when a user does a selection on a date field notice this is general as soon as i change it to any type of a date here i want it to run and the second condition is that this date picker must be enabled if it is disabled and i select on the same cell nothing will happen let's go ahead and color that just so we know what cell we're working on however if i enable that i want to make sure that the date picker appears so those are the two conditions one it must be formatted as a date two our date picker must be enabled so let's take a look now i'm going to be toggling back and forth because i want to show you some settings i want to go back into our add-in here i'm going to go into this workbook and i'm going to set it back to a regular workbook because i want to be able to see these if we take a look at this value in b1 and we click disable and enable we see that b1 is going to toggle between true and false so we're going to check if b1 equals false we are going to set it now there's a macro that's tied to this we can go over that real quickly inside here our date picker macros remember we have a ribbon that's going to run these macros are going to run and that means when i click on this there's a macro called on action date picker enable that's one macro date picker disable so this is the macro that's going to run on the disable button and this is the macro that's going to run on the enable button and essentially we're just going to mark that cell true or false so when we look inside that we see date picker enable b1 becomes true we're going to run a macro to refresh the ribbon date picker disable b1 becomes false so it's kind of simple so that's essentially all that we're doing inside that so back inside a code we need to check for two conditions one b1 must be true and the cell that we've selected must be formatted as a date so let's take a look at those two specific conditions and inside our class module CAPP event is what we're going to do first if the user selects more than one cell at a time I'm going to exit the sub now I'm not sure about this like if you have a merge cell that's a date I guess you could do that so I could mark this so like if you work with merge cells and your merge cell let's say is three cells this will work but if you change it to one it won't so keep that in mind that's something like if you select a large number of cells I really don't want it to pop up so keep that in mind it's something to play with a little bit so I really don't want this code to run if you select on a large cell great so now what we're going to do is I want to make sure that it is a date so what we're going to do is if is date if the value of the cell is a date then certainly that's a condition right so we know that the value is a date we can use the is date command then we know it's a date field so that's the first check that we're going to run and is that is date here so is date so if this is true right i should put equals true i like that equals true even though it's not necessary and still works but i do want to do that so is date is true so we know that it is a date so we can put that in there and assume that next up there's another condition that i want to check i want to check if the format is something similar to yy because you know with international dates the formats could be over the place right so for example if i use a long date let's go ahead and change this to i've used short dates up until now what if i want to put a long date so here we have a long date i also want it to appear in a long date let's double click that we can do that too so if we take a look the formats have to match if i go into the more number formats and i take a look at our formats if we go into custom we will see that date so we can look at specifically at that date we see it's got m's so i'm looking for a format that's something similar to this it's going to contain y's or d's or m's or anything like that and then i know it is a date format almost always so we're going to look for something anything with two y's within the date format we're going to look for something specific i'm looking inside the target which is the cell i'm looking at the number format and i want to use like because i don't want it to be exactly so it's like meaning it contains y y y the format or number format like meaning it contains d d d or the format contains mmm then i'm going to assume that it is a date so here we're going to check let's do right here check if cell is date format and that's all we're doing here so we know that it's a date format however i also need to make sure that b1 
is true. Remember B1, that's on sheet one. I wanna make sure that I'm focused on this. There's many workbooks. So we're gonna focus on this specific workbook, sheet one, B1. Sheet one of this workbook is right here. If I view the objects, you can take us, I wanna look, making sure that B1 is not false. If it's false, we can exit the sub. So to do that, we're just gonna check. I'm just gonna put exit on disabled date picker. And that's essentially what we're doing. Great, now we're gonna focus on that calendar form. So we've got a form here. In fact, this date form is relatively simple. We don't need to go into all the details, but I will go into a lot. We essentially have a bunch of 42 different buttons. We have seven columns and six rows of just buttons. And of course, I've got trainings specifically on user forms. Let's just go into very, very briefly in this. This is a standard date picker that I found. This is called CB month. It's a month dropdown list. This is called CB year, and it's our year dropdown list. And I added some toggle buttons here. So here, buttons for our form back color, our active month color button, our off month color button, and our font color button. And I also have a settings button toggle here. And I've also got another button hidden somewhere right around here. Oh my God, it's so small. It's purposely so small. See that tiny, tiny, we can zoom in there. That button's purposely small and I'll explain that. So there is another button called cancel button and it's specifically small and it specifically should be hidden, but it's got a great purpose. So we'll be going into this. So that's the form itself. And we'll be going through every aspect of it, of how this form can handle. So it's kind of a simple. And these in the individual days are called D1, D2, and all the way up to D42. That's pretty much it. So it's a relatively simple form. There's not a whole lot going on. Most of the magic happens within the code and that's what we're going over. So we're gonna go back into our class module. And so we're focused on this calendar form. And the first thing what I want to do is I want to position this form. This gets kind of confusing. Even I don't understand every aspect, but I did find it. Essentially, all I wanna do is put this form directly under the cell. That is the goal. That is the only goal. And it has to do with widths and screen dimensions and pixels, and it gets very confusing. However, that's all you need to know that all of this ensures that that user form will appear below the cell. So essentially what we're doing is we're setting an X position based on our pixels of our screen and our Y position. And this is where this comes in too, pixels to inches. We're gonna base the left position on the active cell at the top position here. And also we're gonna set the left position on the active window points to screen pixels confusing but basically this sets the left position and this sets the top position the top position plus the active cell height so the reason i'm adding the active cell height if it wasn't on the exact active cell it would appear right here right i don't want it to appear here so i want to add something to that i want to add on the height of the current row and that's important because if for example the height of this row is this, I still want it to appear below. So we want to add in the height. So we're setting the left position and the top position based on this cell here. Plus I'm adding in the height, which is going to bring it right down here, regardless of the height of the cell. So I think that's important. And that's all that that does. And we don't need to go into the details because you could just copy and paste this. So basically we're just setting the top position based on the active cell, the left position based on the active cell, and then we're adding in the height. And the last thing is we're going to show the form. So that's it. That's all we have to do to show the form. So all of this code, all it does is ensures it checks that it's a date format. It checks that our date picker that we do have it enabled and it's going to display the form great so next up once the form is displayed we want to do some things with it all the other magic everything else happens in a few macros we've got our modules here and we've got code that's going inside the form so here's our form if i want to view the code behind the form i click here so this is our form and all the information that's going to be in this form. And we're going to go over the individual details on that form. Let's revisit some of the problems and the solutions that we're going to be focused on. So we're going to pull up that original sheet, which is here, training workbook. And we see that we focused on that. So I'm going to go back into sheet two. So some of the issues that we face is one, the code must be written in every sheet. So we now see how that creating an add-in and having that selection change event in a class module will happen on every single workbook that the user opens. So that's how the date picker not adjacent to the date cell. So we see how we can position that date picker user form directly under the cell. The visible date not present on the calendar defaults to the selected date. So we're going to be getting into these, all these issues during the code inside that. So let's go back into the code here and we're going to go inside this. So 
all of this is the code that's behind the user form we need to dimension some variables i want to know this day what is this day the current day that we're going to be focusing on the current year it's going to be date the current month and the specific calendar date so we're going to be going over those things i also want to know the first day of the month it's a user form we're going to need to loop through some information some of the fields inside that user form so we're going to dimension this as a control controls an element inside the user form and we'll have to loop through i also want to know the month number the year number the start day the language column the weekday number i'll go with what these means and the day row is long these are all long variables we need to create the calendar whether we're creating it or not as boolean that's going to be true or false the color of the background of the form we need that as a string the active month color the off month color and the form font color so we've got four different colors that we're going to be working with and we need to associate that those colors can be visible when we toggle the settings background color the active month the off month and the font color so we can do all of that we can set anything we want here if we want we can go with the light green kind of a nice and the reason we get this keep in mind if you're working on it, it says the extension cannot be used with a file type change the file type and basically it's telling us i've got some save events so if i debug it we're going to see that when i make a change to the column it's going to ask to save the changes it cannot save those changes because we're working inside right i have this information open we have not set it to an add-in so we would need to do that or comment this out as we're making it but to do that remember this workbook here go into the properties here go to the is added change it to true and now we can save it so that's all we need to do so let's go back to a dark and we can do that very very easily so that's all we need to do also what i want to do is anytime i make a change to that added i want to make sure to save those changes as we're working on it so let's do that and we're going to go back in here as we move through the code and we're going to go inside and change it back to false which gives us the ability to view that so keep that in mind i'll probably comment those out as we come up because as we're doing the training i'm going to be changing a lot of different things so this workbook save anytime we make changes let's go back into that let's go back into the code here and what i want to do so it's these save changes so i'm just going to comment this out because as i'm working with it i don't want it to save i just want to make sure that it's not going to create the issue as we do that however once it's an add-in when we make a change to the font color we make a change to something we want that add-in to be saved so keep that in mind one of the first features that i'd like to go over is the ability to simply close the form on escape so if i have a form and i click the escape button i'm not anywhere up here if i put my cursor here and i use escape it's going to close the form i really like that feature if i decide not to use it because it doesn't involve the mouse so how do we get that well that doesn't require an actual button in the form itself so if we double click this and excuse me if we double click this here the calendar form here and i've actually created a tiny button but nobody needs to see that button so if we scroll down here and we just kind of highlight over here there's somewhere right down here not this one here but right here is a button if we click on the properties it's one pixel by one pixel the height is one and the width is one so it's very small it's called cancel button so i made it very small it could actually be under another button so no user needs to see it but it does exist so there's a button that's tied to that now let's go back into the code here so i'm going to click view the code and if we were to locate that button we would see it's called cancel button right here so i created an event on click so although we're not clicking it and it's simply unload me so now that we have a button called cancel button click so that means it's automatic when i press escape it's going to run that unload me escape is going to work as the unload right if i comment that here we're simply canceling that out so if i go back in here and i run this to see if that is working now i have this form here and i press the escape key nothing is going to happen i'm pressing it now nothing's happening as soon as i uncomment that out here and go back into the form it was going to work just fine but we can't let me close the form out first that's not going to work then we're going to close this out that's annoying then we're going to get rid of the comment now we're going to go back into the sheet we're going to launch that form again and we press escape then it's going to get out of here so again all we need to do highlight over it press escape and it's gone very good so that's going to happen when we use the escape key it's a nice way to get out of the screen just by a single keystroke
Now we're gonna turn our focus to the user form. Since we are within this specific calendar form here, everything we do, all the events that take place inside this code have to do with this calendar form. You can also refer to it as ME. That means whatever user form you're in, you don't need to call out the specific user form because we're within the code inside this user form. So now, as soon as this particular user form, the date picker, is going to be initialized we want some things to happen we want to build this user form up and we want to get it to a ready state before the user sees it so all of these things happen before the user actually sees it before it's available so what i want to do is i want to check some information most importantly i want to understand what is the date here is there a current date or is there no date because i want some different things to happen if there's no date let's say it's set as a short date if there's no date i want to default it to the current month the current year and the current day however if there's a date attached to it i want to set it to the current month of the date selected the year of the date and then the date would be italicized here so i want to differentiate between those two so we're going to check the active cell the contents of the active cell if it's empty or it's not a date, maybe it's not a date, then what we're going to do is we're gonna set this date, this is the date variable, we're gonna set it to the current date, VB date and time. We could just use date or we could use VB date time date. So we could also use date here, which is a little bit easier. So I wanna set it to the current one. The other one's a little bit more complete. So otherwise, if it's some other date other than the current day, if it's empty, or it's not a date we're going to set it to the current date otherwise we're going to assume that it's another date so we're going to set this day to the active cell value we already know that it is a date field then what we want to do is and here's where it's very important this is where we ran into a lot of trouble with the original version simply because it didn't work in every region so what i need to do if i take a look at this date picker here and we highlight over it whatever we see five one this particular notations here this toolbar this is the date that's going to be entered however every region is different there might be different formats what i want to do is i want to match whatever format is on the user's machine regardless if it's mm slash dd slash yyy or if it's uh dd slash yy whatever the regional setting is i need to determine what is it what is the user's regional setting to do that i need to determine what is their current date format i want to match whatever they're using i don't want to try to assume it i want to know exactly what the format is mine here is relatively simple we see that it's m m slash dd slash y y y so how do we do that how can we really know what the format is of the current machine well we can do run some tests to do just that so here what we're going to do is i'm going to get this month we're going to set this is to the current day is mm and this year the format is yy so we're using this i want to know the current month and the current this is going to help us let's just say get current month in mm format and this is going to be the get current or whatever it is or the existing one year in yyyy format so that's what it's going to do now what we want to do is i want to build the drop down list so remember i want to build this list this drop down list of all of the months in the year so i want to start out at january and go all the way to december now in my updated patreon make sure you do get on patreon I want to make this list in any language possible so the only thing i want to add on this notice the days of the week i want to change these to different languages and we'll do that so for example when they click uh, language in the day picker here when they click a different language i want those languages to be present also on the month so that's something i need to do on our patreon so make sure you're a patreon member to get these translated in different months all i want to do is i want to build this list this particular list is called cb month so what we're going to do is we're going to build all those months and build out that drop down list i think there's easier ways to do that we could easily just use the named range or something but this is quick it's only three lines of code so what we're going to do is we're going to use cb month that's the drop down list inside our user form just to double check on there if you want to know, double click on here this one is called cb month that's the one we're building out right now so we go back into the code on here we can go inside that so we're going to add an item we're going to go 1 through 12 obviously there's 12 months we're going to format this based on the month so we're going to use this day and we're going to use the month number and month so we're starting out at one 
as we go through. So this is the month number. We're using a date serial. I want to use the current year, whatever this day is, the current year, and we could probably use any year just to build out. We could use any year because the months don't change in a year. And we're going to use the month number. This is going to loop from 1 to 12, and the day doesn't matter any day, but the first day of the month. So basically, we're generating all the months of the year based on this. This will probably change. I'll probably change this, and I'll probably use a table. So what I want to do here, just so you get an idea of what I have planned for multiple languages, is let's go ahead and go back into this workbook. I want to display the sheet, so I'm going to click the options here. We're going to double click and go to false here. And what I would like to do is I want to build a drop down list all the way along. Here's all of our languages. So instead of building it dynamically, I'm just going to look on this list. I'm going to determine what column it is. And I'm going to then create all the months in every language. And I'll have ChatGPT help me with that. I'll be using my AI tool pack to generate languages of all the months. So it'll be quick. And we'll do that here. And then what I'll do is I'll generate that list based on whatever's located here. I just didn't get to that yet because there's a lot to do. Keep that in mind. So let's continue back on. So as we move through, we're going to view the code again. As we move through each month, this is simply going to build out our months. And like I said, I'll be changing that up. It's just three lines of code, but it'll be easy. Continuing on, now what we want to do is I want to set the current month. So in other words, if I run this, let's take a quick look back in here. What I need to do is I need to go in here. So notice it says May. I want May to show up. If it's a different date, I want that different date to show up. So for example, let's say I change it to January, January 9th. If I select on here, I want January to show up. Whatever month is there, I want it to show up. How do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is we have something called the list index. List index is the item number in the drop down list. The first item is zero. So this list index will go from zero to 11. What I want to do is I want to extract the month number. If you have a date and you want the month number, this is going to get it to us. So if our date is in January, this is going to return one. However, remember our list index, our first item in the list always starts at zero. So I must subtract one. That means January would be zero. And so what that's going to do is going to set the selected month. I'm going to put that here. Set selected month. All right, continue on. So we've done the month. So we've built out our months and we've set the selected months based on whatever's in this day. That means the date within the cell or it could be the current date. Now what we want to do is we want to build the drop down list of years. In the years I want to have a lot, I want to put a lot of years on that. So what I want to do is I'll put a total of maybe 70 years. Notice it's currently 2024. So I want to put about 20 years before and maybe 50 years after. 20 years before the current date and 50 years after. That way this date picker will work as opposed to a static list where I have a very specific number of years. This is more of a dynamic list. And so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to run for the year number, the current year number of whatever we've set. So we've already set the year number. So we know what that is. So what is the year number? It's going to be minus 20 to 50. And so if the year number equals one, we're going to set it to the current year. So that means the current year is going to be set here on this day. And we're going to simply run a loop that's going to add all of those years, adding the items to the year drop down list for this. So it's going to be 20 years in the past. I think I can make this a little bit better. I don't think we need format this day, but this based on this day. So we could use something like current year. What is nice is I like about this format is that we can use the current year, whatever the current year is, exactly 20 years before and exactly 50 years ahead. So this drop down list will be even in 50 years from now, it's still going to work exactly the same. And they do like that feature. So that's all it does as we build out the years in the drop down list. Next up, we're going to build those weekday abbreviations. If we take a look inside our calendar here. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday through Sunday. So there's a few things that I want to notate about this. One, I want to give the user the flexibility to change the start date. Maybe they want it Sunday. So notice now it says Sunday through Saturday. I also want to give them the flexibility to change the language. So if I change it to Spanish here, I want those days to start in Spanish. So here the in Spanish. So how do we do that? Well, we need to know some settings and I've got some settings right here. Here is our start date. I want to know what start date was selected. So if I change this here, we see that it's changed here. If we change it to Thursday, we say it's going to change here. I also want to know the start day number, Sunday being one, Monday being two, and so on and so forth. So I've created some named range to help us with that. So if we take a look inside this, 
we're going to call this weekdays. So this is a named range called weekdays. And I'm simply going to run a match statement. And if there's an error, we're going to return one. So what I want to do is I want to match what's in B6. So that means Sunday in B6, we're matching it based on the weekdays. And so it's simply going to return one for Sunday, two for Monday, and so on and so forth. I also want to know the language. So if I change the language here, you see that it's changed in B8. How does that happen? It happens through our macros here. I'll show you those real quickly. Inside our macros here, remember our toolbar macros? We had some toolbar macros. If we take a look inside here, we have our weekday drop down list. So when we run that weekday drop down list here, weekdays like B6 is going to take on whatever's located in K in the index plus two. So this is going to set our weekday, which is in column K plus two. So it's going to set our weekday. That is the macro that runs when we make a change. The language is something very similar. So if we have our language drop down list and we have our language select macro, B8 is going to take on whatever's in she one column I in the index plus two. So column I is where our languages are located, plus two, so English, so on and so forth. So it's going to set that directly in B8. Again, I've got a named range for languages. If we take a look here, we see that it's a named range called languages. Now, if you want to add more languages, all you need to do is make sure that inside your formulas and your name manager here, your languages, the formula here should extend beyond that. So if you want to add more languages, you do that here. Same thing for any other named range. So what I also want to do is I want to know the language column. Now, this is kind of important. If we take a look at our English, what column is that? Equals column 12. So we know English is in column 12. That's very important because if we see here, I've translated all these. And of course, my AI tool pack has helped me do that. So I just created a little formula to help me with that using the chat GPT function part of that. And so here in every single language, I've got that. So it's very important. I know the column Spanish is 13. French is 14, and so on and so forth. So that means if English is selected, I want to know what column is associated with that. Now we can do a few things. We can run a match. So I just use match languages plus 11. So if the first one is found, we're adding 11. We're going to default it to 12 if there's an error. So that's all I've done here. So notice it works on any date. Great. So basically what we need to do when I load in, I need to know are we loading in here? Are we loading in here? Are we loading in here? And the second thing I also want to know is where are we starting? Are we starting on Monday? Are we starting on Tuesday? Are we starting on Sunday? So I need to know that. Knowing that information is going to help us build out that. If we look in our calendar form here, we open up the object. Let's take a quick look at some of these labels. This one, if we go into the properties, is called day label one. This one is called day label two. And the last one is going to call it day label seven. So they're all very similar in names and that's going to help us name them. So now that we know that we've got the foundation building our weekday abbreviations in selected, let me just put selected language in the selected language will help us. The first thing what I want to do is I want to extract some information from our sheet. So what I want to know is I want to know what is that start day? That start day is located in B7. I also want to know the row. The day row is going to be the start day plus one. And that just means here plus one. So if our start day number, let's say change that to Monday. Let's do Tuesday. So it's three. Our start day number is three. Where does Tuesday start? Tuesday starts right here on row four. I want to know that starting point. So all we need to do is add whatever's in B7 plus one. So we're simply adding one. That's going to get us our initial day row. I also need to know what column the language is in. That's very important, right? So our language column is located right here in B9 is I need to know which ones to load. So B9 is going to tell us exactly what column we need to pull the language from. So we're going to put that into a long variable called language call. It's going to set the language call. Now we're going to run a loop from one to seven. There's seven days in a week. ME, I don't necessarily need to use this. I can just use control. It's just kind of a like that. Since we're inside the form, remember our labels are called day label one, day label two, and so on and so forth. So we can have here day label plus the weekday number. It's always going to be one to seven. The caption is going to equal whatever's in the day row and the language column. So whatever's in that day row, that starting point and language column. So we're adding this, we're making the caption of that label, whatever's located in whatever column. So we're simply adding to that. Now, of course, when we get to row nine, that's not going to help. We need to go back to whatever starting at two. So we need to account for that. So we're simply going to increment day row, except when it gets to nine, nine, there's nothing in. So if we start out, let's say on Tuesday and we get all the way down here and we want to go next, 
we need to say, oh, there's nothing in nine, we need to go back to row two. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. If the day row equals nine, then the day row equals two. We're resetting it. And that's all we need to do. So it's very simple. We can load dynamic days and dynamic languages just through this little bit of code. And that's going to add whatever abbreviation for whatever day. And we can start it out on any day using that. Cool. So that's how we build out that portion. And just to take a quick look, if we've got Tuesday in English and I select here, it's going to start out on Tuesday. If I decide to change the language to Dutch here, and I select it one more time, it's going to use the Dutch here and it's going to start. I'm assuming that that's correct, right? If we take a look at Dutch here, we see Din, Wo, Don. So I'm sure I pronounced that perfect. Zon, Ro, Don. So we see how we did that as it started on, right? So here we go, Din. So we're starting on Din, Wo, Don, and then it goes back to the last one. So it worked out just the way we wanted to. Very good. Next up, what we want to do is I also want to set the year. Remember, if I've got a different year, let's to 2024, let's change that to 20. I want to make sure that we've selected the right year. So whatever the year is, I want to make sure that that's selected. So we can do this. Our CB list index is 21 set to the correct year. So it's always going to be 21 because we've always added 20 years before and 50 years after. So we know that 21 is going to be the right selected year. Okay, let's move on. I don't think I need this. We've already set the left position of the form. This calendar form width will refresh the width. Refresh width. Next up, I want to make sure that we've set the height. Now in this calendar form, we've got multiple heights. And the reason is when I toggle this button, I want those color settings to show. So I want to make sure that if I close this out by pressing escape and I want to reopen it, I want to make sure that the height gets set at a very specific height. So that's how we do it. I want to make sure it's the default height. To do that, I want to make sure it's set to 212. As we click the settings a little bit later on, it'll go to 250. So we'll be setting the height differently. I want to create the calendar true. This is a Boolean variable that's going to allow us to show when we create the calendar or not. So we're going to set that to true. And that means that initially, as soon as it launches, we want to create that calendar. And we're going to build that calendar only if create calendar is true. That's the macro that we're going to go over next called build calendar. We've turned on application screen updating. I didn't turn it off in this case. So we're going to go through the macro called build calendar. So it's going to be right here. Now, also, I still want to run this macro. When we change a month, I want to rebuild the calendar. I don't need this here. And when we make any change to the year. So when we make any change to the month or we make any change to the year, we are also going to build the calendar. So that's three events. One, when we originally launch it two when we make any change to the month or when we make any change to the year. And that's very important because when I make a change to the month, I want to make sure that calendar gets rebuilt automatically. Or when I make a change to the year, I also want to make sure. So rebuilding this calendar is going to do just that. And of course we have 42 buttons. So let's set this back to English before I confuse myself and we'll go back to regular. Let's go to Sunday and set it to English. So now we see that those settings are set. Perfect. Now continuing on. Now what we're going to be doing is I want to run. This is the one that actually builds all the dates inside that and of course the colors this is the routine that actually builds the calendar each time so continue on now what that as long as create calendar this boolean variable is true then we're going to do it right we only do it when it's set to true the first thing what i want to do is i want to create that caption i want to create it based on the month and the year and the caption is right here so may 2020 or in this case here we want to create january 2024 i want the month and I want the year to appear as a caption on the user form. So we've captured that here inside the value of the drop down list for the month, inside the value of the drop down list of the year, and we're putting a space between them. So we're creating that user form caption. We don't necessarily need to create that. I can get rid of that, some tests. Now what we want to do is I want to set the focus on our command button one, just in case we need it. I also want to create some background colors. Now the form back color here, all of these colors get set automatically. And I'll show you, I want to go in order, but just so you know, when we save a color, if I decide I want to change the color to the background, let's say we want to change it, maybe we want a little bit darker green here, and we click OK, that color is going to be saved in B2. Let me show you that one more time, just so we know. Take a look at cell B2. If we change it slightly and I click OK, we see that that number changes in B2. So keep that in mind. B2 is saving those numbers. It's saving the display month color. I think I will call that active. 
month color, the active month color, the off month color, and the font color. So those are the four colors. So I need to use those in order to color the form accordingly. When the user makes changes on those, it's going to change in B2, 3, 4, and 5. I want to put those in variables. Those four colors are going to be in string variables. The first one in B2 is our form back color. We're going to give it a variable called form back. The active month color, the off month color, that means the month before and the month after, and the form font color. So all those are going to come directly from sheet one all the way from B2 through B5. Now what we want to do is I want to set those font color labels. Remember we had some labels inside our form, which is the days here. I want to make sure that those days or any of our labels here, all of those use the word LBL. So let's take a quick look inside the form so we can see how we can work with them very easily in just a few lines of code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view the object of that calendar form. I'm going to take a look at this and we're going to take a look inside the properties of this and we see it's called day oops let's get here and we see it's called day label one so we see that it contains lbl if we take a look here inside the background this is called back color lbl so all of our labels contain lbl so if i loop through every single control in this form and i look specifically for those items that contain lbl that means all these days and all these labels are going to be affected and that's exactly what we're going to do inside this code so we're going to run a loop so we've got a control here remember this control is also here it's a control in a form meaning it's one element of the form so we're going to loop through all the elements inside the form and so for each control and i've called out the me that form in controls we're going to do something and what i want to do is i want to look inside the control name if that control name contains lbl using the in string command we're looking inside this name actually greater than zero if it is then we're going to then set the for color to whatever color is located inside this variable so let's take a quick look inside here and we're going to change this so let's say we want to change this to a different color so we're going to run this macro and then we rebuild the calendar each time so maybe we want it let's say a pink i don't know why we would want that but clicking ok and that's going to change all the labels to that color so we're going to rebuild it and we're going to go back to white and click OK. It's going to go back to white. So we're basically looping it and we're changing the font for color form control. So basically every element, if there's a font, we're going to change it. So that's kind of it. Continuing on. Also, what we want to focus on is the first day of the month. Let's put that into a date variable. That first day of the month is a date variable. As we see here, first day of the month, it's already been set as a date variable. As we look at that, I want to know what the first day of. And that's going to help us as we create our calendar so to do that we're going to set using the date series based on the year that's been selected based on the month list index plus one that means the list index is the number remember zero is january so if january is the month plus one is going to be one so that means the month is going to be one and the number one the day so using date serial we have the year we have the month and we have the day the day is always going to be one the month is going to be whatever the selected item is in that month the list index is that selected item that's going to get us our first day of the month i also want to know what the start day is the start day is a monday tuesday wednesday and that's going to be located in b7 b7 is located right here and we're going to put that into a number variable i want to know is it one two three that's very important because we're going to be using the weekday function and the weekday function is something like this so let's close this calendar out i think i've got one open so i can type now what we want to do is i want to use the weekday function and the weekday function whether it's in the formulas it's always going to be the date here so we're going to use the first day of the week as a day of the week and we wanted the date so whatever the date is we'll put in the date whatever it is then we want to put in the one two three or four so sunday would be one monday would be two and so on and so forth so we're going to be using that weekday function inside the code to help us so that's very important and we understand the start day now what we want to do is i want to get the regional format this section here is going to help us determine exactly what regional date format on the machine is and here's the idea behind it i'm going to put in a specific date i'm going to use may 3rd 2024 i'm using this date because all the numbers are different so when i put this date in your machine whatever machine it is if the code puts it in your machine and then what it's going to, it's going to look at the format what is the format of this date we know that if i put in this date very specific and i'm going to use the date serial to do that so 
we're going to use sheet one b10 and we're going to use date serial the reason i'm using date serial is because it starts with the year it goes to the month and then the day so if we take a look inside here we remove the comma and then we put the comma back in we see year is integer month as integer day as integer so that's always the case now how does it end up in your machine in my machine it ends up as month backslash day backslash year 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 so four digits for the year so if i take it i know the five is a month regardless some of the five might be in the second position or the first position and i replace that five with mm and then i take the three which is the third day of the month and i replace that with dd and then i look for 2024 and i replace it with yyy or i look for 24 and i replace it with two y's so if i replace the numbers with letters i'm going to get my format and that's exactly what i've done so first of all i'm going to put that date in b10 now because excel every time you put in a date it's automatic so for example if we take a look at this cell right here it's general right but if i put in five three even if i just put in that a cell is going to assume it's a date and it's going to automatically set it to a date format so that's how it's going to work notice it says custom but it's actually a date so if i go into more number formats we see that the custom is dmm so it's going to determine whatever the default date format is so that's it so what we're going to do is we're going to use that same format to determine what the day is and if of course if i change this to a short date or something like that it's going to set to the system default now if we take a look inside here short date is our system default the asterisk and then whatever the system default is is going to show that great so the idea is to replace the numbers with letters and it'll give us that particular format that we need and it is that format that we're going to use inside the calendar so to do that we're going to place the date once we place the date in here let's go back to the original sheet which is here and then the code so we're going to get this into a variable check date now if we take a look inside we see that check date is a string variable and that's what i want i want a string variable because we're going to be replacing some information here continuing on so we're going to get date as text once we're in the text i want to look for 2024 if it's found i'm going to replace it with y y y y next up if it is not found maybe only 24 two digit year if 24 is found i'm going to replace it with y y if the five is found i'm going to replace it with m and if the three is found i'm going to replace it with d so what that's going to do is continue to build that proper date format so let's take a look at what that might look like i'm going to stop the code here and then i'm going to select on this and if i highlight over here we see that now our date format has been built m slash d slash y so we have the system date information on every machine it might be different so now once we know the date format we can then use that inside the code so let's continue and run that code and we see we've got the date so now when i highlight over here we see that our tooltip is the date format because that tooltip is what's going to be entered if i insert this click here it is that tooltip that's going to be inserted whatever the cell date format is automatically is going to set that up so that's that date format that gets created based on that and that's a unique way to automatically determine the format regardless of the regional settings once we have that date format we can then start to build out our calendar and we're going to do it with a loop so now what i want to do is i want to determine the calendar date so the calendar date is the date that's going to be added inside each day so we're looping there are six rows and seven columns so we're going to be total 42 day buttons and remember each one of our numbers starts with d and then the day number so that's what we're going to be using d and the day number let me remind you of that if i view the object we take a look at the name here and we see that we go into the properties this is d1 d2 and so on all the way through 42. so that's what we're going to be working with each individual item so the calendar date we're going to use the format right i want to format we're going to use the date add function as we add individual dates i want to use the days we want to add individual number of days we're starting with the day number now this day number is that start day so we want to know the day number which is going to be 1 through 42. we're going to subtract that the first day of the month using the weekday function remember i said the weekday function is going to be that start date the start date is one through seven depending upon what day we're starting the week so we're going to use the weekday function for example let's say the first day of the month let's pull this one up let's pull the current month up so here we'll set this to a date and it's going to pull up the current month so short date and we'll pull up the current so we see the first day is on a wednesday right so we know if our start date's on one this is going to be four so we're going to return four now let's take a quick look at our code here so our start day is one our weekday of the first day of the month is going to end up on a wednesday so this is going to return four 
If I subtract day number, that's going to be 1, minus 4, I'm going to get a minus 3. So if I take the first day of the month and I subtract 3 from it, we're going to get 3 days before it. Exactly. So if I take a look at this, our first day of the month here, oops, not that day. Let's do this cell again so I can determine which is this one here. There we go. So our first day of the month, minus 1, 2, 3. Minus 3 is going to be 28. Do you see how that works? So our first day is 4. Minus 3 is our first one is 28. So then we want a date format. I want that calendar date format is going to be whatever date format has been set up here. So that's going to create that date. So I know that the first one is going to be on this particular calendar, if we select this here, is going to be April 28th of 2024. That's the first day. So we're going to put that into something called calendar date, which is right here. Now what we're going to do is I want to set the font color. For every single one, I want to set the font color. is going to be the form font color. We're going to set that here. Next up, what I want to do is I want to get a caption. Now what's the caption? Now the caption is the text on the button. So if we see the text on the button, it's just a single number, right? The text on the button is nothing more than the number. That's the caption. So we're going to take that calendar date and I want to format it to a single or double digit depending upon D. So we're formatting it. I want only the day number to appear in the caption. However, the control tip text is going to be that full date and it's going to be on that date format. We've already formatted it here based on the local machine format, the calendar date. So that means if we hover over it here, that is the tool tip. You see, it's got the right format. And that's very important because when I click it, it is that control tip text that's actually going to be placed inside here. So that's the text that we want based on whatever the cell format is. So that's all we have to do. Notice that April, because April's the month, so I like that here. Now clicking on May. So we understand that so that the button itself, the caption will take on a single day and the tool tip will take on the entire day formatted based on the system machine. So that's right here. The control tip will take on the formatted set calendar date. I'm just going to put formatted. Oh, let me close that. I can't type with that. We'll put it in here formatted to machine format and this is going to be single day. All right, next up, what we want to do is I want to know if it is the active month. Now, this is important because remember, our active month is going to be in green in this case, and our month before or month after is going to be in gray. So we've got a specific color called off month color, or we have active month color. So I need to determine what are we going to color? Are we going to color it our active month color, or are we going to color it our off month color? So I can do that just by determining the month number. And to do that, if the month of the calendar day equals the month of the first day of the month, so we're taking the first day of the month, and I'm determining the month of that, and the month of the date. Remember, as we loop through this, this changes. So to do that, we're going to say if they equal each other, we know it's the active month. In that color, I'm going to set the active month color, and I also want it bold. I want to set the bold font to true. Else, we're just going to call this off. Let's close the calendar one more time. Using escape works also. We're going to call this off or maybe inactive month, inactive month. In that case, we're giving it the off month color and we're not gonna bold the font. Very good, so this colors and places the days. Now what I wanna do is I'm gonna probably change this. It's kinda of hard to see, but whatever date is in here or the current date, I wanna make it italicized and notice it looks a little bit different. It's selected and it's italicized. So we're doing two things for that. I could probably could change the font color or something like that to make it a little bit more obvious, but it kinda of gives it that a little bit slightly different on that. And that's exactly what we're gonna do for the selected or current date. Remember, it doesn't have to be the current date. It would be the current date if we, let's format all these columns as dates so we can work with that. You know, if it's empty, then it's always going to take, today's May 8th, it's always going to take that current date. However, if it's existing, it's going to take whatever date's in there. So keep that in mind. So that means it is the selected or the current date. We're going to set the focus. That's going to like give it that little focus, a different look. And we're going to make sure that it's italicized. That's it. That builds out all the days in our calendar. I do want to set the form back color, the entire user form back color based on that back color. And there's some frames that are inside this form. I also want to set those frames to frame one and frame two. Also, I want to set them to the back color. And also, I want to send the form back color button. What is the form back color button? If I take a look in here in settings, this is our form back color. I want to make sure that button has the back color. So let's look inside our form again here so we can take a look at that specific viewing the object. We're going to take this one. If we go into the properties, we see it's called form back color. This one's called active month color. This one's called 
off month color and this one's called font color so i want to ensure that those are also made sure that they have set the font colors we are going to set our back color based on the form back color our active month back color so we're basically setting all of those buttons the back color and all of those buttons to whatever the off month or the form font color so let's just put a notation right here set customize color button back colors so that's all we're doing on those okay very good so that's all we need to do to build out the calendar we're making very good progress so now user form key down now this is where we have the escape if key code equals escape then we're going to hide that so here's the key down user form key down so this in combination with the cancel button will automatically close the format so key code escape when it's pressed we're going to unload the form so the combination of the two cancel button and this user form key down will automatically hide it very good next up each individual day when we do each individual day clicking on d1 d2 has its own macro we're going to take the active cell value remember we're taking that control tip text and we're going to pull inside the active cell value so when we select the calendar it's going to take whatever that control tip text we see it here as we hover over it it's going to take that whatever it is when we click it it's going to place that directly in the active cell so that's what all of these buttons do they're all the same so we don't need to go through each individual one great so now we have some settings macros remember these are the macros that we're going to focus on when i select the calendar the first thing what i want to do is i want to have this something called toggle so when i select this i either want to show or I want to hide this and all we really need to do is extend the height of the user form to do that so if the user form height is currently 250 I'm going to set it back to 212 if it's currently 212 I'm going to set it to 250 and that's all we have to do so let's take a quick look inside that toggle that's the macro that's been assigned to that button if the calendar form height equals 250 then the calendar form height equals 212 else 250 so it's very simple it's a single line of code that's all we do to toggle it. it's nice to do that when we set the back color so now regardless of the color they're almost all the same every macro that means the four macros that we use to set the colors i want to do a few things one i want to launch this color picker so we can select whatever color we want when the user selects a color i want to make sure that that color let's say i want to select the back color as a green maybe let's reset it to blue because i'm getting tired of looking at green and click ok whatever color that they've selected i want to place directly inside b2 and i want to color the background and so to do that we're going to use application dialogues excel edit color and one means the first color so this just basically sets the first color that we're going to select and it is going to do that now the 56 colors and so we're going to use number one and so it's going to launch that color editor and then what it's going to do is whatever color the user selected it's going to place it directly in b2 we're going to set this into a variable the form back color the same one we used before and we're going to just take whatever's inside b2 and we're going to put into that variable we're going to set the back color of that button based on whatever the user set we're going to set again the back color of the user form frame one and frame two and i've just commented this out but by the time you get it you'll say this is important but not while we're working not during the training i don't want this workbook to save because it'll trigger something we don't need that so that's exactly what we're going to do inside this okay so that's always so basically when we make a change as you just saw it's going to color everything in the background active month almost exactly the same if i decide i want to change the color here and click ok it's going to do just that so it's going to color all the cells so let's take a quick look at that now we remember all these numbers are colored when we rebuild the calendar right if we remember we've set the colors here as we're looping through the back color that back color is going to be set here to the active month color or the off month color so all we need to do is run this macro build calendar when we make a change to either the active or the off month color so the active month or the off month color we just need to again launch our color editor take whatever the user has selected color and place it in this case b3 set this into a variable active month color and then what we want to do is i want to set the back color of the specific shape that active month that button and then we're simply going to set our variable create calendar to true and we're going to build the calendar out exactly the same for the off month color no different we're just simply coloring that specific button 
and also the font color exactly the same we're just setting the variable the color in here the reason we put it in b5 is when we save the added and we relaunch it again we want to make sure those colors are always saved so when we rebuild the calendar we know what colors to use those colors are always saved inside the sheet and we know what colors to create them with and we're going to build that so that's all we have to do with the colors let's take a look and see where we are inside our training i think i've got a uh, calendar launch here yeah we don't need that and we're going to go back into the training so we've got the date picker jason cell we've built that the visible date not present on the calendar it defaults to the selected date or current day we went over how to get that we went over how the user customized interface we can change by colors we covered the regional date issue how we can automatically put a date in a cell and determine what format of that date so we can always match the user format we've gone over escape to close how we can press the button also non-multi-language we solved the language database and also we customized the start date whether it's sunday monday or tuesday and we went over that so we went over almost all the macros that we could inside this and so that's exactly how you create this really cool date picker now make sure you don't forget when you do get it don't forget to right click the file after you download the xlm select that unblock checkbox then all you need to do is go into the developers here add-ins and then just browse for wherever you've downloaded the add-in and it'll come up let me know if you have any issues i'll be creating an update on our patreon make sure you do join us on patreon because inside this i'll be adding that the months are now multi-language so i'll be building that out i'm going to be also adding additional features and I'll also be making updates and fixes and changes based on your feedback so make sure you do join us on patreon or youtube silver it's the same thing thank you so much for your continued support and we'll see you next week thanks again